Thank you for joining me for episode two of Strong Personalities. Today, I have the very humble, top five humblest people on earth, Stephen Good. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Thank you for that uh, very nice introduction. Look, um, I do what I can. I call it how I see it. And by the way, I see that you try to liquor me up already with a little bit of whiskey. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> trying to go for the Joe Rogan effect to loosen us both up. Oh, yeah, some, at least there, me, well, I'll give you the most honest answers I can. There we go. We want honesty here, guys all the honesty we can possibly get. All right, so let's start off with the standard question that I'm gonna ask everybody to start off um, these episodes, and that is, what or who got you into Strongman? I actually grew up watching Strongman back when it was called Metrics World's Strongest Man. I used to watch it on, I don't know what sports network, but it came on late at night, and that's when I first fell in love with the sport. Um, but here in Texas, I played football and they give out football scholarships and not strongman strong man scholarships. Oh, so if you if you <laughs> had a chance to choose at an early age and like they were both making Ooh. the same amount of like money or opportunity, would you have chosen strongman? That's a very good. Are you saying strongman's better than football in Texas? I am saying that. I Ooh. I can for me it's better. I enjoy it more. Uh, I enjoy the the camaraderie camaraderie. I enjoy the group. Uh, every person I've ran to Strongman, I've enjoyed their company. No one has been arrogant. No one has been rude. I think it's a very tight-knit community that with is. a lot of great people. Um, I met a lot of bad people in football. I can just say that. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a culture for sure. So you played football. In, are you from Texas? I am from Paris, Texas originally. Oh, Paris, Texas. So you played in uh, high school football here in Paris, Texas. Where did you go after that? Uh, after Paris High, I moved on to University of Oklahoma. Why did you betray Texas like that? <laughs> That's a good question that I've answered a few times now. I uh, actually was offered a scholarship by the University of Texas, went down to Austin, uh, met a very successful coach, Coach Matt Brown. Um, That's so it, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It just was not there. Uh, me and my dad both agreed that that wasn't the school for me. Okay. We thought Austin was a little bit big. The campus is 40 acres, I believe. Um, so when I went there, Austin was very big to me. Yeah. I thought I could get in trouble at that campus. I went and visited Norman. It was a more small town. Everything revolved around the University of Oklahoma there, and it just felt like a better fit. No, that's awesome. Those are legit reasons to go. And um, you get a lot of flack for OU. How do you deal with that? Do you hear it at competition still, or <laughs> it doesn't matter where you go. It just follows you everywhere here in Texas. Uh, unfortunately, I'm so old now, nobody remembers that I played at Oklahoma, so they leave me alone. I don't know, man. I saw you <laughs> packing for the Arnold this week, and you said one of your essentials was the OU flag. Okay. You called me out. You got me. I still get it every once in a while. And uh, the numbers speak for themselves. I don't really have to take up for myself. <laughs> we have a lot of championships, and we're pretty relevant when it comes to the national spotlight. Texas is relevant for other reasons. That, well, no comment there. I can't say for either one of them. And I, by the way, I absolutely love this uh, whiskey glass that has the OU symbol. I think that's pretty cool. And then we also have the whiskey bottle with the giant OU symbol. I dig it. I totally dig it. Tiffany's back there like, yes! Um, so when you got into Strongman, what were your initial, like, what was your first competition? Very first competition was the Cowboy Shootout uh, in Garland, Texas at Battle Axe. And I competed in the novice division. Um, I did not do very <laughs> that, well. Really? <laughs> I ended up getting third place uh, when I thought, uh, because I was the strongest man, strongest person at my commercial gym, I just thought I was going to walk into a novice strongman <laughs> competition and walk away with it. Uh, I was shocked at how strong everybody was, even in the novice uh, section of the competition. Got blown away. Uh, and... My stack strength wasn't there. My movement events weren't there. My game was terrible. How much experience had you had with the equipment for that competition beforehand? Did I had, that have anything to do with it? I Maybe. Uh, I had log pressed one time before that competition. Okay. Uh, so that might have had something to do with it. I, I don't think so. I just don't think I was prepared. I don't think I realized how strong I needed to be and how conditioned I needed to be for that competition. It's funny you said about the conditioning because I think conditioning has been setting our strongman athletes apart here in the last two years versus what we grew up with 
um, where it was just like these giant big bodies. Now mm. we're seeing these athletes, like body composition is completely different. Um, I know I met you at a competition at Metroflex Fort Worth, the castle. What competition was that? That was my second competition and that was called the Berserker. The Berserker, that's, yes. that's the name. I couldn't remember it actually. I know that's where we met. Um, and then you actually got first place overall, and I remember the trophy that you got because it was so cool. Yes. So what was the different? What was the time gap between that first competition and the Berserker where I met you? Uh, so the very first competition was July, and then my next competition was October. Okay. So not a huge gap. Not it's not like I had a year of prep for it for it anything like that. I just took it serious. I hired a coach. I got my conditioning better. I got my strength up. Uh, started working more on technique instead of just trying to be the biggest person. And you mentioned yep. earlier, the sport is changing the last couple of years. Uh, the old saying was mass moves mass. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily the, the thing now. And, and I think that you're starting to see more athletes. Uh, not that the, the guys in the past weren't athletes, they were just different kinds of athletes. You're yep. seeing more explosive athletes, more fast twitch athletes come to the sport and have success. So, what are your right now? We're preparing for the Arnold. Actually, we've done we're done with the preparation, right? Yes. When do you head out for the Arnold? We leave tomorrow morning. All right. How are you feeling about it, man? I feel good. I um, I'm usually a nervous wreck at this point in time. I'm usually uh, a lot more on edge. Um, I think uh, if we had tried to do this before nationals, I think I would have been so on edge I couldn't have done. Really? That. Yes. Okay. So I get very nervous, very on edge. This time around, I, I feel very relaxed. I feel very confident. I'm not sure what has changed. I don't know if I just I've had a very good prep. I was about to say, I, I've seen your workouts consistently on social media, and then I've been fortunate enough to actually see some of those lifts in person, and I think this is the most consistent and, uh, I've ever seen you with, uh, with this kind of like training. So I think that probably has the most to do with it. And with Nationals before, you kind of already kind of got your feet wet with there. So now it's like, let's go. Very true. I'll be seeing a lot of the same guys that I did see at Nationals. Uh, so I'll be seeing some familiar faces. Um, there was, it was a pretty big stage at Nationals. So I think that got to me a little bit. Uh, so this time it just kind of seems, you know, it's kind of weird to say that this is my second big show and it feels like a routine routine work. No, that's awesome. So have you done anything differently to prepare yourself mentally to avoid the pitfalls of seeing a big crowd like you did at nationals? I think just being confident in my lifts, being more technically sound yes. with my lifts helps a lot. I haven't had, um, I don't think we failed any major lifts this time around. There wasn't any uh, form breakdown. Uh, you know, we didn't have to go back and try lifts again to fix my technique. That's awesome. So that's, I think that's why that my confidence is so much higher here is because I'm, I feel I'm the strongest I've ever been and my technique is the best it's ever been. Dude, that's exciting to hear. I'm looking forward to see, uh, watching you uh, compete this weekend. Um, so what are your just overall goals and strong man? Are you, have you thought of anything past the Arnold? Are you just focused on this or even before we uh, started prepping for the Arnold? Have you thought about like, okay, now that I see what I can do here, mm -hmm. what are some respectable goals that you think you can actually achieve? I haven't looked past the Arnold too much because okay. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I know what my overall goals for Strongman is. I this I want this to be my bread and butter. This is where my life will be now. That's this, awesome. In Strongman, one way or the other in this sport, I will be involved and retire from this sport. So when it comes to um, the Arnold, um, part of the goal of this series is to also introduce strongman to people that aren't familiar with it. So mm -hmm. what is the Arnold and what category are you competing versus what maybe somebody might automatically assume when they just hear the Arnold? So the Arnold Classic uh, goes back a long ways. I know the strongman portion of it started in 2003, okay, early 2000s, and Mark Henry uh, <laughs> was, yes. was the overall winner for the Arnold Classic, who also wrestled for WWE at the time. And speaking of, you also had a little uh, WWE uh, experience. I had a little stint with the WWE. I really enjoyed my time there. I was fortunate enough to uh, be one of the first classes uh, to join the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. So I wrestled under the NXT brand. What was your name? Cole Andrews. Cole Andrews. And my character was just a cowboy from Texas, so. That's so fitting, his name. Yeah, I had a tag team partner. Um, Wesley Blake, 
Uh, he's also from Texas. He's from South. He's from South Texas. Uh, we just fit together. We the, our promos. We didn't. It was just us talking. We didn't have to. <laughs> we didn't really have to script much. We just took a couple of shots of whiskey and went out there. And we we when I said we were cowboys from Texas, we lived it. We were we everywhere we went. Pearl snaps and jeans, cowboy hats, belt buckles. Everywhere we went, didn't matter. It didn't matter if I was going to a grocery store. We lived that character. I'm noticing the the whiskey is a common factor for these. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Now you told me a little bit story about a uh, experience with a big name in WWE. Um, you almost made his phrase "You can't see me" apply to his vision. <laughs> you want you want to touch on that real quick? Yes, uh, John Cena was recovering uh, from a injury, and he had already done uh, some some movies at that point in time. Everybody, he was really known around the world. He was a big name for WWE. He was the number one Make a Wish yes uh, gentleman uh, guy. Or he was the number one requested superstar for Make a Wish. So he was a big deal to the company. I was standing around outside the ring, and he said, "Get in, warm up with me." I said, "All right." So we start warming up. <laughs> Everything feels great. He's like, "All right, let's lock up." I'm pretty green at this point in time. I think I've been with the WD for a couple months, um, so I've, I've just got my lock. I, my lockups look good. I think they look good. I go to lock up, and I thumb him right in the eye. <laughs> I'm like, and, uh, and he goes like this, and he just doesn't doesn't make a noise. He just holds it for a second, and in my eyes, I'm fired. I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to clear up my locker. I'm so sorry. You're like already walking out the <laughs> yeah. ring. Uh, he just shrugs it off, and he goes, don't worry about it. It happens. One of the nicest gentlemen I've ever met. So there wasn't like any change to his demeanor after you poked his eye, or he just kept going with it? Just kept going. Like, it never happened. Said it's okay. It happens. That's a true professional right there. It is there. a very true um, professional. Just, I'm just curious, like who would who would have been your dream matchup? Doesn't matter, like existing or retired uh, WWE superstars. Like who would have been your dream matchup if you had a WrestleMania main event? Who would have been the dream match? You're everyone's gonna expect me to say Sting or The Undertaker, or Hulk Hogan, but the guy I enjoyed working with the most was actually one of my coaches, Billy Gunn. Ooh. I thought he, I thought he sold the best. I thought he, when he was, I mean, he's a six foot five guy, big guy. But how tall are you? About six five, six okay. six. But when he's in the ring, he moves like a lightning, and he can sell with anybody. He can make anybody look big. He can make anybody look small. Uh, just his ring presence really just made me feel comfortable. And I, and I know if I ever got the chance to work with him uh, in a pay per view, it would be magical. Yeah, so I used to be into the WWE, like when it was known as the WWF, and one of the things that I always heard, like behind the scenes, mm -hmm. was you always wanted to look for chemistry with the people that you were going to have like rivalries with and everything. So absolutely, yeah, that makes total sense. It's not just like I just want to fight him because of the name. I want to fight him because of the show we can present, and I think that that's what would have made you successful in the WWE if you would have kept that going as well. So Yeah, you got to yep. protect each other in the ring. And yep. if you don't like each other, you might not protect that guy. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> isn't that the number one reason? Like, they don't care how good of an athlete you are, how good you look on, on, on camera. Mm -hmm. If you can't keep yourself and your uh, teammates safe, like, you're gone. Yeah, yeah. because if you both get hurt, you don't make anybody money. <laughs> yep, it's all about the money, for sure. Um, so right now uh, we're working towards the Arnold. Mm -hmm. What does your day-to-day -day process look like? Like diet, like your training. What does all that look like? Give a day in the life to our viewers. Okay. Uh, so I've been off from the gym for about a week now. So let me back up. Yeah, go for to, it. To uh, the final couple of weeks of my prep, I wake up and I would try to eat two breakfasts. I would wake up. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I like this diet already. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'd wake up real early, eat a bagel. Um, then I would probably go answer some emails, relax for a little bit, drink a little bit of coffee, come back, have some fruit, have some eggs, have a little bit of protein before I go to the gym. Get to the gym around 8.30, 9 o'clock. Uh, work out for, I would really try, I would love it if it only lasted two hours. But realistically, it's about a three and a half hour workout. Get all my main lifts, I try to get all my main lifts done with, within the first hour. Is there a lift you hate? Ooh. It used to be stones. It really did. Okay. It, um, but the more we've trained them, the more I've really started to appreciate them. 
when I first did stones, I didn't wear any sleeves, no tacky, nothing like that. And Raw dog in it. Got it. And it peeled the skin off my forearms. Huh. And I was like, I don't ever want to have to do that again unless it's in a competition. Absolutely. But we started training it and just loading a stone, the triple extension of the stone, <laughs> it makes you better at everything. Yep. Um, so you're at the three and a half, you were talking about how your workouts, you want them to last two hours, but they're at three and a half hour About mark. three and a half yeah. hours. Uh, by the time, especially if you're doing event training, you have to set up the events. Yeah, I feel like setting a lot of the, yeah. yeah, setting up the deadlift ladder is a is a good warming up for it <laughs> and setting it all up. That takes 45 minutes right there. Yep, the warm up is in the loading of all the equipment. <laughs> yes. So you set all that up, you get through your main lifts, and then you have your accessories. And you... I try to blow through the accessories in an hour. Like I said, that just doesn't happen. So yeah. honestly, my main lifts probably carry over to about an hour, hour and 45 minutes. And then I try to get the rest of everything done within an hour. But once you get to accessories, you, you can start supersetting some stuff. You can really start getting some high volume. I love supersets. Yes. Yep. So it moves a lot quicker. Um, after that, come home. Uh, try to get about 60 grams of protein in me as fast as possible, uh, force some food down, answer some more work emails, relax. I'm not going to lie, I'll probably take a nap. Hey, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with naps. Nap. People, please nap. Yes. It's good for you. Take a power nap, wake up, work a little bit more, force down some more food. You keep saying forced. I'm not actually a big eater. Um, I'm a picky eater, that's the problem. Oh. Yes. Why? I don't know. Who I don't hurt like you. <laughs> Vegetables hurt me. I don't <gasps> like them. Really? Never. I know. I'm a child. You're a big ass child. <laughs> I'm a How child. How do you not like your vegetables? I know it. I have to. I'll, she, my wife, uh, Tiffany, she'll cook. She cooks great. She these amazing green beans, and you can just see me just picking up one by one. <laughs> <forcing them down. laughs> I'm picturing this giant <laughs> being defeated by green beans. <laughs> Okay, so you keep forcing, you're at the second force meal after your workout, yes. so you've done 60 grams of protein, two meals, what else? Um, after that, uh, the day's pretty much done. We relax a little bit, watch some TV, and then what I'll do is we have uh, a, a big rug in front of our TV, and I'll sit down with a massage gun, and I'll stretch and work, work out some kinks in my body. Do you just stretch, like, intuitively, or do you follow a program? For that as well. I don't have a what's, what's your recovery that. look like? My recovery is based off of how I'm feeling. Okay. I think I um, my coach is going to disagree with this, but I know my body pretty well. Who's your coach? Uh, Derek Owens. Dude, Derek Owens is a beast. Yes, I don't Derek know if you Owens, saw earlier yes. today. He hit that 340 axle clean. Yes. After breakfast, he weighed 202 pounds. So he probably wake he probably woke up right at 200, and he cleans and presses 340 like it's nothing. Yes. So he coaches you. He coaches me. Uh, I can go on and on about Derek Owens. I really can. Uh, he's been more than just a coach to me. He's been a good friend. Uh, he's been a great motivator. But I don't have to go on and on because his numbers speak for himself. Absolutely. And I think is there like a little bit of a, like a friendly competition between y'all? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Because I always feel like y'all always look at each other's numbers like, yeah, I got to beat that. I got to beat that now. <laughs> what the problem is, it doesn't matter what I do. Okay. Uh, he's 130 pounds lighter than me. So he'll always win. Yeah, pound for pound. Yes. Yeah. So okay. If, so if he does 340 and let's say I, right behind him I do 360, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Unless, unless I'm... Unless I'm pressing 500, it really the math doesn't add up. That's, so yeah. I, I can understand that. I'm curious. Do you think that's a competitive advantage that you have that your coach is also like somebody that you're you can be competitive with versus other people who just have a coach? Um, yes, because he does know what gets under my skin. <laughs> he knows how to motivate me for a lift right away. Um, he, unfortunately, he knows how my mind works and he knows how competitive I am and he can get under my skin immediately. So I do think that that helps. Uh, one of his most famous lines is right before I'm, I'm about to do a big lift and you can kind of see the, the worry on my face. Uh, he'll, you want me to do it real quick? Yeah, go and for that, it. No, no. That's oh, what I'm saying. He, he comes up to me and he was like, hey, you want me to do that real quick? And it, <laughs> you can just see it. Go, it just... There's nothing worse. There's nothing more that gets under my skin. Bravo, Derek. That is beautiful. And the problem is, is I don't want to call him out on it. 
Because what if he does do it? <laughs> <laughs> And there's always a camera at Battle Axe, always. so yeah. There's always a camera rolling somewhere at Battle Axe. No, that's, I, I, I really love y'all's dynamic. It's always fun to watch. Um, if you could train with any strongman in the world, who would you train with? That's a great question. I think right now I would want to train with um, Martin Lysias. Yeah. Uh, I, I think his program is very similar to what Derek preaches. Um, you don't see him... Uh, go RP10 during his training year round. He really keeps it, he sits in the pocket, he makes sure he's technically sound, and then you see him four weeks leading up to a competition and his numbers just are through the roof. You you mentioned something that I, I don't know, maybe the viewers mm -hmm. won't know. You said the pocket. What's the pocket? So you sitting in the pocket is sitting around the RP7 to 8 range. Okay. Uh, if you don't um, effort you don't yeah. want to to struggle. You don't want to struggle with lockouts. You don't want to have to to hitch a deadlift or anything like that. You want to sit in the pocket, make sure you there's no form. There we go. You want to make sure there's no form breakdown in your lifts. There it is. Yes, yeah. I had to circle back. The wheels were turning. <laughs> yes, you just don't want any form breakdown. You see a lot of guys training balls to the walls uh, year round, and then they fry their CNS. Yep, and then it's too late to recover. Yeah, when I was doing Olympic weightlifting, there were certain people that would do the Bulgarian method where you would do kind of like a plus 90% effort on a regular basis. But even them, that was only for like a one block, not a full year. And that's what a lot of people tend to do, which mm -hmm. I think is attached to ego lifting. I'm not going to lie. Yes, yeah. 100%. And, uh, and that's why I'm so grateful for Derek is because if I didn't have him, I would be that person ego lifting 24-7. <gasps> Steven. I know it. I, I still look it. up to you. <laughs> I mean, I have to, but yeah. What's your diet look like? So my diet kind of changes okay. uh, on how I'm feeling, where my weight's at. Um, Very intuitive. Yep. Yes. So I look, I, look, <laughs> I look in the mirror every day and I weigh myself every single day. And if I look in the mirror, I'm like, okay, that's, I need to clean it up a little bit. Then I'll tighten, the, I'll tighten, I'll tighten my diet up. Uh, I'll weigh myself if I'm not, if I'm under uh -huh. or if I'm really under, then I'll kind of eat dirty that day <laughs> and just try to force feed six uh -huh. six thousand calories, seven thousand calories. So it does, which is not the best method. I I can say it. it's not. Okay, you answer my next question. Yeah, go for it. It's not the best method, but it seems to work for me right now. Okay, it won't work in the long run. I'm I'm shocked you said that the whole weighing yourself on on a daily basis because I mean just for the average person you fluctuate like five to six pounds mm -hmm. I can imagine when you're three hundred pounds plus mm -hmm. that fluctuations even more so why why is the weight I can understand how you look mm -hmm. but why is the weight on the scale such a big deal for you um, so if I if I weigh two thirty when I go to bed and I wake up or I'm sorry if I, <laughs> I wish if I, <laughs> It's just wishful thinking one day. Oh, man. That's uh, I don't know about right. that, but sorry, go ahead. Uh, so if I wake up, or if I go to bed at 3.30, and then I wake up at 3.20, I know that's 10 pounds difference. That's a lot of water weight that I lost. Um, so that's when I have, but also know I have room, if I want to, to go to Whataburger or something like that. Now, if I go to sleep at 3.33, and I wake up at 3.29, I've, I've got to be on point that day. There's okay. no room for error. That means my hydration's got to be on point. That means there's a lot of chicken and rice that day. <laughs> <laughs> a staple. Uh, which, which I know it doesn't make sense, and it sounds like, oh, well, that's just going to catch up to you in the long run. Yeah. Which you're probably right, but as of right now, for this prep, that's, that's what's worked for me. Okay. Is I haven't been super clean with this diet. But you have a six-pack. I know. At over 300 pounds. That's what do you mean you haven't been that's, clean? That's what I'm saying. I, I don't go. I don't eat fast food every day, but I your do. six pack makes you want to drink. <laughs> that was the big thing for this prep. I know we're drinking right now, but this is the first time I've drank through this entire Arnold prep. Oh well, thank you for sharing your drink with me. Yes. I appreciate that. Uh, cut out alcohol, and that was big. Yeah, oh no, yeah, that's huge. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, that took out uh, blow uh, water in my face. Uh, I didn't feel bloated once I stopped drinking, everything like that. Awesome. I feel sluggish. I know that I'm my diet's not on point. I know I've had too many simple carbohydrates. I know I probably had something too greasy. Ooh, what's your what's your go-to like cheat meal? Man, I'm gonna it's, judge it you. I'm gonna judge you so hard if it's not good. It it is good. If 
my ideal cheat meal, if I need some comfort food, I know where to go. And where is it? It's usually I would say it's Whataburger, but there's this phenomenal diner right down the road called Del Rock Diner. And they had the best chicken broad steak I've had in a while. And he's supporting small businesses. Yes. Boom. <laughs> if he wasn't already cool enough. By the way, I really like the Battle Axe shirt. I wish I they still had that one. Yes, I love this retro logo. Uh, he is trying to find something that is retro to, to do a second drop. I don't know if you're... I'm, I'm a big Marvel fan. So you know what that reminds me of? The Thor... The last Thor movie because right. they was eighty yeah Ragnarok because yes. that's exactly what it reminds. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, that'd be cool. But I did get the new Strongman Battle Axe Barbell shirt. I love the fit. So I, it's a, mm, that's that's the good thing this. about his drops. He does make the like, good quality shirts. Heck good yeah, fitted shirts. It's so soft. Yeah, it's very so soft. soft. Touch it. You know what that's made mm. out of? Best friend material. <laughs> Best friendship pickup line ever. You're welcome. Um, by the way, I've noticed that in a lot of your lifts, the shoes that you wear. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, where did you get those shoes? So, I met this very nice... Uh, handsome. Very nice, handsome, well-groomed gentleman uh, at Berserker. We kept in touch, and then yep. he came into Battle Axe one day, oh. and he was like, wow, this guy, I was failing... An overhead press. Yeah, it was and horrible. he was like, you need some stability. You do. And he was like, I have these lifters. They're old, but I don't ever wear them. Yeah. And I mean, they were almost brand new because I literally <laughs> never wore them. <laughs> in case you, in case y'all haven't noted, it was him. It was, it was spoiler. It was, it was him. It was, it was, it was, was Yanni. Guy. He came through for me. And if you look closely, I will be wearing them for three of the events at the Arnold. And honestly, it really was just like I saw like you needed, you wanted them and you could definitely use them. And they actually fit you perfectly. They, are, they do. Because like for me, I have a white ass freaking foot and it just was not working. So I'm glad. I feel like every time I see you work out, I was like, I've walked a mile in those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's end this with going to um, the questions that come from the group, uh, from the strong man community. Uh, but I'm excited to tell you. Um, I actually, when I posted on social media that I wanted to get some questions, I actually had, uh, he called himself your biggest fan. Really? Um, he sent me a video. I didn't get a chance because I got stuck in traffic. All right. He sent a little late, but I want to share this video because everybody has been so encouraging. I actually like 70% of the me messages I got when I asked for questions weren't questions. They just wanted to encourage you to do your best because we're all cheering for you here in the Texas strongman community. So seriously. I, I can't say how much that... Um, there's not enough words to say how much that means to me. Truly. No, seriously, you're you're a genuinely good guy. You're very humble. Jokes aside from the one, one from the one I started, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm gonna play this. So let me know when you're zoomed in. I'm excited. To see, I, I didn't get to see it, so I'm excited to see what this this fan had me, to say. That's all. Is it zoomed in? Are you good? Okay. It helps if I hit play. There's a cone. Does that mean? No. What's up, idiot? Guess what? Not your biggest fan. That's a ceiling fan. Got a couple questions for you, though. How do you live with yourself? I've seen you park in senior citizen spaces. I know you're old, but I didn't think you were that old. And for that matter, do you think it's okay to cut in front of little kids at the ice cream truck line? I've seen you do it. You bought them all out. Maybe you should leave some for other people. Maybe you would have real fans instead of ceiling fans. And the last thing, I just, I really don't get this one. Is it because you can't count? But why do you go in the 10 items or less line at the grocery store when you have a full cart? Can you really not count? Or are you that big of a douche? I, sh I should have wa <laughs> I, I sh I watched that. Um, I am, s wh who is that? <clears throat> That's a Mr. Garrett Payne. I think his Instagram handle is the quad timidator i'm sorry he looks like a pain in the ass for sending me that i am <laughs> guys i am so sorry i should have i should have filtered through this video beforehand i thought there were going to be words of encouragement do you want to answer any of his questions are you I'm a not douche? sure those were those were questions uh i think what that comes down to is that's a lonely man that has a lot of time on his hands um why is he following me in grocery stores why does he know where i park um, where is there an ice cream truck? I'm not sure. These are questions I have for him. 
Um, me and Garrett do go back a little bit. There is a small rivalry there. Um, he is, but y'all are both big guys. Like yeah. That can't be a small, just a small rivalry. He's a rivalry. very big guy for 5'10". I will give him that. I, I heard he was 5'6". Okay, he... You know what? I, I'm not sure what kind of shoes he wears. He might have lifts. He might be he might be heightening. I'm not sure. He was the one who switched y'all's faces on the picture today, right? Because yes. he gave your face on his little body, and then he put his face on your big, like, athletic-looking body. You know, I thought that was a picture of me and him standing next to him, and he just swapped the faces. Yeah. What it was, though, I did some research. It was from the movie Twins. Oh. One was Dan Vio, one was Arnold Because he wishes he was your twin. I think so. Um, nice guy, though. Um, he hunts very well. But I, you know, what's weird is I was coming out of the grocery store and he accuses me for going in the 10 items or less line when I had more. You can count. I think I can count. I think he was counting the... The, uh, the times he's lost to you. <laughs> Maybe that's what he added there to make my 12, my 10 item list 12. I'm not sure. But I noticed when I was leaving that there was a camouflage Jeep out there. So I took notice, and I noticed that he doesn't return his cart. <gasps> now, wow. I might be a quote-unquote douchebag, but I return my shopping carts. No, 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 no. The douche title <laughs> always goes to the person who doesn't return the cart. I, th I th That's two against one, Mr. Garrett Payne. Garrett, you betrayed me with that video? You made me look like a fool! But it was funny. It, it was seriously funny. Um, thank you for taking it so well. I'm sorry that I wasn't better prepared and I hadn't filtered through that. Um, but what we can do is actually go towards the questions of real Stephen Good fans. Real quick, uh, in case y'all don't know, Garrett will be at the Arnold as well. I didn't know there was a... A division for weakness? There's a Hobbit division. There's a Hobbit division! A Hobbit division. Lord Just, of the Rings has yes. made it to Strongman. But he will be there. Um, I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, back and forth before. Uh, not so much after. I think he'll quiet down after the results come out. It usually happens when you lose. So, <laughs> it makes sense. Um, so let's go to these questions just to finish this interview. Um, it, the first one is, is it true that Liz saw you fall on your ass, it was capitalized, <laughs> trying to press a log when y'all first met? This is 100% true. The very first time I came into the Battle Axe, it was right before my first show, okay. the Cowboy Shootout. I had never touched a log before. And I worked up to about 275. And it felt okay, and I felt great, and I was like, "Hey, let's let's see if we can hit 300." <sighs> Clean up 25 pounds. <laughs> clean, clean 300 pounds. <laughs> got to my chest, went to press it. Got about halfway up in the lockout. I was stubborn, thought I could fight through it, and I lost consciousness and fell down. You you passed out just for a brief moment. I didn't know what happened. I, I, I was lucky enough the log went forward and it didn't crush me. <laughs> but yeah, she was there and <laughs> at probably my lowest moment. She was probably laughing at you, wasn't she? It was con she was concerned. Okay, that's so good. I will say that. She good never job, laughed Liz. until she knew I was okay. <laughs> I feel like that's every good straw man competitor. Yes. They always check on you before they start laughing at you. Okay. Um, does Lily know how strong her dad is? You know, I don't think that it matters to her. That's good. Yes. Y'all have a really cute relationship. I love it. <laughs> she is my biggest supporter, but I don't think she quite knows what the what the, the amount of weights I lift, which is okay. Good. It's not, you know. You need that one being person to, that doesn't just care. That They just want you for you. Yes. I could lift 100 pounds or I could lift 500 pounds. She's there no matter what. As long as you can lift her up. There you she's go. happy. The, she might be the strongest out of the two of us. Really? Every day she lifts my spirits. Ooh, that was so smooth. <laughs> that was so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you were... I love, I love these questions from the Strongman community, by the way, so thank you. Let's keep these up. If you were a kitchen appliance, what would you be and why? <laughs> I wish I could say uh, a fridge because I'm cool under pressure. But if you do know me, I am frantic. I get nervous. <laughs> I throw up before every competition. What? Yes. You throw up? 
every competition. Every competition. That's why usually my first event's the worst because I have no food in my system. I'm dehydrated from throwing it up. Wow, I didn't know this. Okay. Yes. Uh, so honestly, I'm probably the dishwasher that overflows and panics through the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the <laughs> yes. Everything's clean. Everything gets clean. It's just it's messy how it gets done. It got it got the job done though, so we're good there. All right. Um, <laughs> who is your favorite French sister? Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I believe this question is not actually uh, a person from France. It is their last <laughs> name, which is in case you're wondering. Uh, the, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> these are, there's a family of Frenches. Um, one is uh, Shelly, and there's Rachel. Um, but this may not count, but my favorite female French is Miss Sunny, their their mother, who looks young enough oh. to be their sister. I haven't met her, but... She is a delight. That's awesome. She is very polite. Um, she comes to the gym on Fridays, uh, does some cardio, very nice to everybody. Yeah, she's my favorite. She never gives me a hard time. <laughs> she's always positive. I love the camera <laughs> stare when you said that. That's perfect. Okay. So your favorite French is actually, what was her name again? Sunny. Sunny. Ray of Sunshine. There you go. You other two should try it sometime. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> hey man, do you have anything else, that, any message that you want to send off the interview on? Um, we briefly touched on uh, my coaching, uh, the gym I go to. Battle X Barbell. Battle X Barbell, Garland, Texas. <sighs> as you were both representing. Uh, I can't say enough about how much I love that gym. The positive energy, the positive vibe is always there. Everybody's always encouraging. Everything you need uh, as a strength athlete is there. Uh, there's two owners there, uh, Chance and Derek. Uh, Derek is definitely also, he's very involved in the Strongman community as everybody Absolutely. knows. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, he's a Texas State Chair for Strongman Corp. He's also a great promoter, great coach. Um, he does things for that gym to help the community as well. He is always bringing in new equipment for the members. Yes. Uh, powerlifting and strongman, he's done amazing yep. things for. Uh, and as a coach, I can't say enough. Like I said before, he's completely transformed the way I train. He's completely transformed the way I recover. My thought press, my whole thought press, thought process throughout the day has changed because of his coaching. That's good. Um, I actually did have one last question. Mm -hmm. I always like to end it with like a very thoughtful question. Your support system, who is it? And why is it important? There's so many. Go for it. Um, the strongman community in general, I feel like is a very good support system. Um, especially on Facebook, we have the Texas Strongman page. Yep. Uh, I think cheers. that's a, Yes. Cheers to that. Uh, I think it's a very important for us to be able to post in our tight knit community where everybody knows what we're talking about. Everybody knows what you're trying to say. Everybody knows what you're going through. Yep. So if you have, if you post on there's questions, uh, or if you just want to post a PR, everyone on there is so positive. And, and you know, if you have questions, you see every, there's some, there is some camaraderie back and forth where you joke, but you can see there's heartfelt answers in there. And I love that. Everybody's trying to help everybody there. Uh, so that's one. My beautiful wife, Tiffany, she puts up with more than you can imagine. If I have a bad workout, it comes home with me. I wish I could say I turned it off and on. But it... Does she take out the green beans? Uh, out of your dinner, dinner is not affected. That's why I'm <laughs> saying she's a better person than I am. Uh, my uh, Dinner is not affected by my mute, mood. Um, but I wish I could say that uh, I can turn it on and off at the gym. I... You know, I don't bring work home with me, but I do it because it means so much to me. So it does affect me when I come home if I've had a bad workout or things didn't work out if I, or if I didn't do as well in a competition. You know, it haunts me for a little bit. And she understands that. And she gets that. And she's very supportive. This whole, especially during this Arnold prep, this has been a very stressful point uh, for me because it is a big competition. Yep. It's international competition. And she has been with me every step of the way. Other support systems, you know, Derek Owens, um, he's flying with me to 
uh, to the Arnold. We're staying together. That's huge. Uh, Derek Owens is the closest thing uh, that you can have to a living coach. Yep. And I can't say – this is the third time I brought him up, and, I, and I'll say it again. There's not enough I can say, it, say about him. Uh, and the support system at Battleaxe is amazing. Every single uh, – I, I feel like I know every single member there, and I'm pretty sure I do. Um, you know, everybody follows everybody on, on social media there. Everybody's trying to uplift everybody there. Yep. Everybody's on the same team. Everybody wants the same goals, and, uh, and I love it. And uh, this podcast is a great support system, too. Aw. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. I thought you were going to say Lily. <laughs> I think that's a given. She's there for every, <laughs> she's there for every workout. Uh, but this, this podcast is, is a great support system. You're, you're helping a fellow athlete out. You really are. You're you're helping. Uh, well, it's important for people to know that the reason that the strongman community is growing so much is not just because of the pros, like those are the ones that get the attention getters, mm-hmm. but because of the attention getters, it's all these hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people signing up to be a member of the strongman community, the ones that fill out the rosters for everybody's competition. So yep. that's why for me, this is important. You're spot on, and I'm, and there's nothing negative to say about pros because no, that's, absolutely that's, not. That's my no. goal. Yep, is to be there. But uh, what you're doing for the amateur strongman community is amazing because we do make up ninety percent of the population. And there's so many good stories out there. Yes, like you poking John Cena's eye out. I that was like <laughs> it was not all the way out, guys. It was like you know. it popped out. <laughs> like you, the injury he was out for like a year and a half. That's why, because he popped his. Just there you go. You thought it was fake. <laughs> but anyway, Stephen, thank you so much for taking some time before you head out to the Arnold. I really, I really appreciate, appreciate it. Strong personalities, episode two, done. Stay strong. I'll see you on the next episode. I'm not going to flex next to him. <laughs>